Welcome back to Rayleigh's Small Engines. Got a little Craftsman LT2000. Briggs and Stratton. Customer says, don't want to turn over. Put a new battery in, he did. Doesn't want to turn over at all. I got an idea what we need to check first. Y'all stick around. So, I am, this thing just will not spin over. Huh. Let's take a look at the oil. Looks to me like that's over full. Yeah, I think that's 50-50. Kind of tastes like 87 octane with 10%. It's a 10 w third. That's it. Let's fix it. Well, I hope the noise isn't too much. We're working outside because I got one tore down in the shop. I'm going to get this thing come off of there. There it goes. My goodness. Somebody's been in this valve cover. That don't look factory to me. Maybe it is. I don't know. So, let's take this Sparky plug out. Watch for water uh, fuel to run out, y'all. I want to know. Tell me, is it? 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 We're almost there. Look at there. That boy was right. Look at that gas come running out. Uh-oh. Get your finger out from in front. Doggone. Uh, look here. Oh, I can just hear it running out. So guess what's wrong? Really simple. It's another carburetor job, folks. The plug is so wet you can't even see the gap. <laughs> now you can. Whoops. There you go. <laughs> Too easy. Now don't get all excited and go grab that key and turn this engine over and I'm going to tell you why. That spark plug wire laying right there is gonna arc on that head. It's gonna ignite that gas and boom, you're gonna have a mess of a fire and you don't want that. All right, let's get that one out so we can get this one in. So you're wondering how did I diagnose this so fast? It's really simple folks. You gotta listen and look. When I turned that key, this flywheel barely moved. How did I know it wasn't electrical? Because I can hear that starter. If it's a solenoid, you're gonna hear just a click. But I saw that the flywheel barely moved and stopped. Okay, so that told me starter's working, solenoid's working. If you got one that just clicks, I've got a video on how to diagnose that and repair it. And I'll put a link to that down in the description. And it's a just clicks video. It's on a Cub Cadet, but it works on any machine. Same procedure to diagnose it. This one moved just a little and I could not get it to go past that point. So that told me my uh, engine was hydro locked with fuel. That's what we call it, what I call it. If it would turn and I could take my hand and get it to go on past that point, that would tell me we've got a compression release issue. Valve out of adjustment. Uh, if the valves are out of adjustment, the compression release won't work and you might have a bad camshaft. I've got a video on that. I'll put that link down in the description for you. It's taken me three weeks to get this doggone bolt down. There we go. On these, when you're pulling this cover off, there's two different bolts. One has a short shoulder and one has a long shoulder. The long shoulders go in the back, the short shoulders go in the front. So, and that's pretty much it. It's really easy. There's two bolts back here, two in the front. That's it. So, let's get this off and I'll show you the rest. Oh, this one might have the screw down here. Some of them have a screw. Throw it on the floor, throw it on the floor. Nope, doesn't have a screw. There's an O-ring right there that kind of holds them on there. Okay, engine cover off. So in order to look up the correct carburetor or any parts for this engine, you'll need these numbers right here. 
and put them into somewhere like parts tree and then look up your numbers. Now the numbers that'll be on there, you're gonna look up the carburetor and we can see that it's the Nikki 6 carburetor, okay? Because it says Nikki right there, okay? Got the two screws holding the bowl. The float is plastic. These things are terrible, terrible about leaking. And what they did, they updated the part number. Now you could go on Amazon and get you a $17, $21 carburetor. You probably still going to have a problem. Or, or you can do the superseded number is this, OEM Briggs. And that changes you over to a Walbro style carburetor. There will be a difference here because this one has a bent uh, fuel inlet. The original has a straight. That does not matter. And all I'll do is cut that fuel line off. Get these off of here. These fuel filters, they're junk. Throw them in the trash. It puts you a 10352 Kawasaki fuel filter, paper filter on there. And then go back here and put you a doggone shutoff valve in it. So I'll show you how easy it is to get this carburetor off and swap it out. Okay, so I went ahead and put our fuel shutoff valve on, a new fuel filter. If you remember, I told you that other carburetor has a straight fitting. So I moved the clamp back here. I'm just going to cut that one off. Now we're going to unplug. We're going to take a 7 16th or 11 millimeter and go right here. There's a little nut and a nut. Throw it on the ground so you can lose it and not find it later. Now, some people like to take these off up here at the intake, but I like to do it this way. You do it how you want to do it. Dude, that other side is loose. Now, this linkage is really simple. All I do from this point here, I'm going to turn this carburetor and this choke linkage will slide right out of that groove. Lift it up and go. Keep note of what hole it come out of. So now I just continue turning the carburetor, go like this and that, and there's a junk nick, all gone. Now on these new carburetors, first thing you wanna do, this little tab, cut it off. Because, ooh, I'm glad it didn't get you in the eye. Um, because what it's going to do is it'll interfere with that breather cover and cause, an, uh, cause it not to work correctly. So now what I'm going to do is hook up my choke uh, spring, my throttle spring, golly, and then our throttle linkage. Now we're going to do our choke linkage. Just going to slide this in that last hole. We're going to do the spin right back around very simple put it right back in here oh i need a gasket i think i got one in the box here there we go we got gasket all right now we'll just go starter bolts back up here get our gasket on just like this start it back on and buzz it back together Real simple, folks, real simple. So, anyhow, I'm gonna buzz this back together right quick and I'm gonna get the air cleaner cover on and then we'll change this oil and see if this bad boy will run. Y'all stick around.
Okay, let's see what's gonna happen, folks. Gotta put some gas in it. It ain't got no gas in it because it all leaked out. Hey, if anybody interested and want a cool t-shirt, I'm gonna give you a link down below. You can go check out our store. Now through September 30th, 2022. 10% off if you use the discount code easy fix I'm gonna put it right down here easy fix in the thing and it'll give you 10% off so let's see if this thing is gonna run Are we getting fuel now fuel filter filling up bowl filling up if you've never seen a uh, carburetor done on a mercury uh, 20 horse outboard Go over to TNT Unleash. It's releasing same time this video does. So go over there and check it out. And you can see how we fixed the carburetor on our uh, little John boat. So y'all stick around. Let's see if this thing will fire up. I better move that in case of backfire, huh? coming out down there that's from that gas and oil got down in the engine so that'll clear out once we get it outside and run it some we appreciate y'all watching y'all please click that subscribe button share these videos with your friends i'm t-bone give us a thumbs up we'll see you next time thanks for watching